everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to week two. We're going to go through our video lecture for the week. And uh, what we're going to look at this week is um, we're going to talk about how to graph lines relatively quickly. During the first week of the course, we were looking at um, the basics of graphing, but also some of the characteristics of lines and how they're tied to the equation and kind of Essentially, your your line is a representation of all the different solutions that make that equation work. Um, ultimately, we want to be able, though, to go from the equation to potentially a table or a chart to the graph relatively quickly. Um, and so today we're going to talk about a technique uh, for basically taking the equation when it's in slope-intercept form and generating a graph really fast. Um, we'll take you through a couple of examples to see how that works, and then we'll come back and wrap things up for this week. So to use the graphing shortcut, what this basically is, is a fast way of taking the equation of a line and generating what the equa or what the graph of that uh, line will end up looking like. Um, in order to do that, what we always want to start with is what's called the slope-intercept form of the equation. Y equals mx plus b is the generic formula um, for how it's usually written. And the idea behind this version of the equation is that it gives you the two key pieces of information that you need in order to graph the line. The number that's in front of the x, the m, is the slope of the, uh, slope of the line. This tells you how steep the line is. We've talked about this in previous, uh, previous discussions and in previous videos. Um, essentially what the slope does is it tells you rise over run. It basically gives you directions for how to get from one nice point on your graph to another. The second key number then is what's called the y-intercept, that's the plus b part of the equation. And essentially what that is telling you is where the line crosses the y-axis. If you were to plug 0 in for x, that term would disappear, leaving you with just the b. So what's nice is when it's written in this form, the number is right there. Now in order to graph a line, essentially what you need is you need a point uh, where you can start from and then the slope tells you how to get to other nice points on the line. So it, it makes for a really fast way for taking the equation and generating the graph. So let's run through a couple of examples here for how this works. So keep in mind that we're always going to go back to y equals mx plus b. That's the generic form of the equation. So here is our first equation, y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. The place that we start from is we start with the y-intercept because we need to get that initial point graph so then we can work from that location to other spots that are going to be on the line. And so all you do is you graph a point on the y-axis at negative 2. Essentially this has the ordered pair 0, negative 2. Now from there we're going to use the slope to help us find another nice point. Remember the number that is on the top, so that would be the 3 right here, is your rise. That's how far you're supposed to go up and down. The number that's on the bottom, the 4, is your run. That's how far you go left and right. Since both of those values are positive, that means we are going to go up 3 and right 4. So we're going to rise up 3. So from this location right here, we're going to go up 3 spaces and we're going to go right 4. There is a second point that's on our line. Now, technically we have more than enough points here. Um, you need two in order to uh, sketch the graph of a line. Um, however, to be safe, a lot of times you want to maybe do more than that. Uh, the reason for that is, is if you happen to make a little mistake, uh, your line's going to be off. If a third point is graphed and it still lines up, then you know that things are good to go. Now, from this second point that we graphed, what we can do is we can continue with the same pattern. We can go up three and to the right four. But now the problem we're running into, as you can see, is our graph isn't big enough and we're running out of space. Um, so there's another little trick that we can use um, to find that third point that we need just to make sure everything's okay. Instead of going up three and right four, if you do the exact opposite process, that will also get you points that are on the line. So instead of up three and right four, we can go down three and left four. So going back to that original y-intercept that we graphed, we're going to go down three and we're going to go to the left four. And notice that it's going to line up. Um, the way you can also think about why this works is if we were to start here and go up 3 and right 4, it would continue on with that same pattern. So you can either follow the slope as it's written or you can do the opposite process and that will get you points that are on the line. Now as you can see, the three points line up pretty well for us, so all we got to do now is connect the dots. So we'll bring the line in here and from the looks of things, I think we're looking pretty good. 
there's the graph of our line. Notice that we didn't have to do any math in terms of generating a table or doing any calculations. All we had to do was use the numbers that were in the equation to generate our graph. Let's do another example. Okay, this time our equation is y equals 1 fifth x. Now if you notice this looks a little bit different than our y equals mx plus b form and all that's going on is our value for b happens to be 0 plus 0 means we don't have to write it down and so that means our line is going to go through the origin. So whenever you don't see a number being added or subtracted that means the y-intercept is at 0. So we're going to plot that point right here in the middle. After that process is the same. We look at our slope. It's 1 fifth. So that means we're going to go up 1 and right 5. So to get our second point we're going to start at the origin go up 1 and to the right 5. So there's point number two. Now again we can continue on with that same pattern go up and right. The, again the only problem though is we're going to run out of space so we're going to do the opposite. So going back to the origin we're going to go down one and left five. And again notice that things are lining up for us really nicely so connect the dots with a nice straight line and there you go there's the graph of our equation. No math required no evaluating or anything like that. It's just a really fast way of taking the equation of a line and graphing it. The only catch is that your line has to be in the form y equals mx plus b. Let's do one final example here just to make sure everybody's on the right track. So our equation is y equals negative 3x plus 4. So again our y-intercept is the number being added or subtracted so that's at plus 4 so we're going to start there. Now, this time when we look at our slope, it's just a single number. It's negative 3. Um, it doesn't present itself in that fraction form that we need to do rise over run. So it's really simple. Think about negative 3 in fraction form. And the way that you do that is you simply put it over 1. So your slope is negative 3 over 1, which means we are going to start at our y-intercept and we're going to go down 3 because it's negative 3 over positive 1 we're going to go to the right 1. Now if I want to continue with that same process I can go ahead and do that. I can go down 3 and right 1 and there's our three points. I can also do the opposite because I got room this time on the graph where I could go up and left and again, notice that everything seems to be lining up for us pretty good. Now again, the minimum number of points, the absolute minimum number of points is two. I would highly recommend that you always graph three points just as a check. And if you always want to graph more, you're more than welcome to. There's an infinite number of points that fall in this graph, so graph as many as you feel comfortable with in order to generate your line. But once you've got those line, oh, those points, excuse me, you should be able to connect them with a nice straight line. And there we go. So using the graphing shortcut, it's a nice quick way to take the equation of a line and generate the graph. So the graphing shortcut, hopefully uh, that makes a little sense to you. And again, it's a really nice way of generating the graph of a line. Um, it's fast, it's easy, it doesn't really require a whole lot of work in terms of the math. The only time where you might have to do a little bit of work is if the equation is not in slope-intercept form to start with. Sometimes you have to rearrange uh, some of the variables or some of the terms a little bit to get it in that form. And some of the problems that you'll be doing this week will require you to do that. But once it's in that form, uh, graphing the line is a piece of cake. Um, be sure to let me know if uh, you do run into any problems or have any questions. I know that there are some tricks from time to time. You know that if uh, the uh, y-intercept isn't written down or if you have a number that's not quite in fraction form, it can be a little bit tricky. But if you can get it in that nice graphing form, hopefully you'll be good to go. Uh, be sure to let me know if you have questions. Um, have a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Take it easy.